All right, today we're going to go ahead and work on finding equivalent ratios in ratio tables. Um, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is just find an equivalent ratios. And you can find equivalent ratios by multiplying or dividing a fraction by the same number. And equivalent ratios are also the same thing as equivalent fractions. There's no difference. So to find an equivalent ratio for this one, for 3 fourths is our first example, I mean you can times the top and the bottom by 2, and you would get 6 eighths. You could multiply the top and the bottom by 10, okay, and you would get 30 over 40. So those are both equivalent ratios to 3 fourths. Same thing for 12 thirteenths. You can multiply the top and the bottom by 2, 26, <coughs> oops, sorry, 24 over 26 would be an example. Um, you could even multiply the top and the bottom again by 2. You get 48 over 52. So again, they're just equivalent fractions. Um, down here at the bottom, you can divide this one by 6 if you want to by the top and the bottom. And you get 1 fourth. You could also divide it by um, 3. You get 2 twelfths. So those are proportional fractions. Those are equivalent fractions. Same thing with here, we can do, go ahead and divide the top and the bottom by 5, and you get 2 thirds. Or I could multiply by 5 maybe, top and the bottom, and I actually get 50 75ths, and those are equivalent as well. So go ahead and pause the video and just do a few of them yourself. Alright, now that you've done them yourself, um, if you went nice and easy like I did at the top, like times 2, you should have gotten like 10 24ths. Um, over here, you could have maybe multiplied by 2 as well and gotten 40 60ths. Maybe you decided to divide by 2, the to top, or I'm sorry, divide by 10, the top and the bottom. You gotten 2 thirds. Um, 12 sevenths. Notice how it's an improper fraction. Same rules apply to it. You can multiply the top and the bottom by 2 if you want. 24 fourteenths. Um, 8 24ths, you could divide by 8, top and the bottom, you get 1 third. So there's just a number of possible answers you could get for that. Alright, the next part is actually using your ratios and finding your ratio tables. Okay, So a ratio table actually has um, a certain variable at the top and a certain variable at the bottom. And you, they go ahead and they have a relationship. And the object of that is to find that relationship, to find that unit rate, and then you can find any proportion you want. So the first example we have is a recipe that yields 12 cups of pudding that calls for 28 ounces of milk. How many ounces of milk do you need to make 18 cups of pudding? So right now we know that there is um, 28 ounces of milk makes 12 cups of pudding. Okay. So to find my unit rate of that, to fill this portion in, because I do want to fill in how many ounces of milk it takes to get one cup of pudding, I would go ahead and do milk per cup, any cup of pudding. And so I would say 28 ounces of milk divided by 12. Okay. And this is going to actually be a mixed number. So 28 divided by 12. Then we have 12 goes into 28 twice with 4 left over. And then this goes down to 2 and 1 third. Okay. So ounces of milk will be 2 and 1 third. That is my unit rate. So for every 1 cup of pudding I want, I need 2 and 1 third cup ounces of milk. So if I were to do 18, I would actually go ahead and multiply by this 2 and 1 third. So I do 18 times 2 and 1 third. And I know my multiplication rules, I do not multiply by a mixed number. So I go ahead and make it into an improper fraction. So I move it back to my 28 twelfths, or I can do 2 times 3 plus 1 is 7 thirds. Go ahead and multiply across. 7 times 18 is 70 plus 56, 126, divided by 3. Then I can see how many times 3 goes into 126. Let's do that up here. 3 goes into 12 four times, and then 3 goes into 6 twice, and I get an answer of 42. So for 18 cups of pudding, I need 42 ounces of milk. 
Next one is a recipe for one peach pie calls for six cups of sliced peaches. How many cups of sliced peaches are needed to make four peach pies? So I have number of pies one, two, three, and four, and then I have cups of sliced peaches is six blank, blank, blank. And this one's nice and easy because they've already given me my unit rate. I already know how many cups, how many slices of cups of sliced peaches it takes to get one pie. So when I think about a constant proportional, um, it's that one times two and one third gets me my answer up here. Twelve times two and one third. Eighteen times two and one third. Okay, those get me my answers. That's my constant of proportionality. So my constant proportionality for this one is times six. So I'm pretty much just multiplying by six every time. So I would get 12, 18, and 24. All right, and it asks me, what is the constant of proportionality in this example? I would say multiply number of pies by six cups of peaches. Nope, sorry, you couldn't see that. All right, and the next part is, can you write an equation that relates to pies and peaches? Write S stands for number of pies and P stands for number of peaches. Do you see the constant of proportionality in the equation? I would say, um, however my number of pies that I want, okay? So I have pies. I'm gonna multiply that by six cups of peaches, so it's gonna be six P is going to equal um, the number of peaches total. So, oop, I should do S here for pies, sorry. So it should be six, six cups of sliced peaches for however many pies I have is gonna equal how many peaches, which is P. Okay. I'll do this, that um, cups needed for a pie. And then this is number of pies. And this is total number of peaches. Okay. All right, so what do you want to go ahead and do right now is pause your video. And you're going to want to try the three example problems that I've got for you. Here is my first page. Okay. So again, if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it to go ahead and complete those. And then my second page is right here for you. So pause that and write down that problem in that um, ratio table as well. All right, and hopefully you completed those. So let's go ahead over them. My first one we have is um, at Books Unlimited. I have four paperback books for $16, fill in the missing values. I went ahead and found my um, unit rate which is sixteen books, sixteen dollars divided by four books. That's the information that's given to give me that f each book is four dollars, and so I was able to fill in the rest of them. My constant is multiply the number of books by four dollars, and then my equation is four n equals c, four being the cost per book, n being number of books, and c being the total cost. My second example, um, very similar to it. I have um, eight books for forty-eight dollars at Barnes and Noble, so I went ahead and found out my unit rate, which is my cost per book. So I did $48 divided by eight equals $6 per book. And I filled in the rest. Constant rate is multiply the number of books by $6. And my equation is 6n equals c, six being the number, the cost of each book, n being the number of books, and c being the total cost. And then for your last example, you had waters, water you needed per um, lemons to make your lemonade. So every 12 lemons, um, she uses four cups of water. So I went ahead and did lemons per cup of water. I did 12 lemons divided by four, giving me a constant of three lemons per cup of water. So that's why I have that one cup of water up there. So my times three, I'll multiply the cups of water by three, um, gets me the number of lemons, is my constant of proportionality. And if I turn it into an equation, I have three <clears throat> um, lemons per cup of water and is going to equal the total number of lemons.